Thank you for joining this training video for Easy Worship 7. This video will focus on some shortcuts and hints for setting up a new worship schedule in Easy Worship. So when you open the program, you'll come to this screen. As you see, there is nothing in the schedule currently, so we have to start from scratch on this one. One thing to note is songs that are ran through PowerPoint, such as these here, which is most of the songs we use, will be under presentations, not songs. The actual songs that are under the songs tab are lyrics only. So for most of our purposes, we'll work under the presentations folder. About 90% of the songs we sing at Maple Hill will be listed under presentations. All of the songs from the Song and Faith and Praise songbook, as well as most newer songs we have chosen, the arrangements we use will be listed under this. And we update this about every six months or, or less and add songs to this, but most should be found right here. So let's say the for the song the song leader has given you, you want to add this 10,000 Reasons mashup. So you can just click that, drag it up into the schedule. Maybe we're also going to sing Our God, He is Alive. Let's say we want to search for a song here, though. So if we wanted to search for What a Beautiful Name, you can just type a few words of the song. It will bring up any song with those things in it. So you can go down. You can find What a Beautiful Name. Click on that one. You can drag that one up into the schedule. The next section we'll focus on is scripture readings. So if we wanted to display a certain scripture, you'll go here into the scripture bar. Just delete what's there. Let's say we were going to display John 3, 16, and then we'll go 16 through 20. If you go over into your scripture heading, it will highlight those scriptures. You can just click, left click in this section, it will turn blue. You can drag that entire scripture section up. Whatever background we have already chosen is what will be behind the background of those scriptures. And then those are there. Let's say for during the prayer, we wanted to add a picture. So you can go to media, there's videos. This is where countdown videos and things like this would be. There's also images, which are just pictures with no video. So let's say we wanted to just bring over an image focused on prayer into the schedule. So we can do that easily right there. This is also where you would find some of the worship videos we use. If we needed to add a certain video that, that Rob wanted to use in his lesson, you can do that. Anytime you want to add a video to this, you would just right click in this section import a new video file and then you would search for that on the computer and then once it uploads then you can drag it over into your schedule if it's not a video you feel like we'll use more than just one time you can also go up to this toolbox up here add item you would browse for a media file if it's a video Let's say there is a song that you cannot find down here under presentations. You would actually browse for a PowerPoint file because until it gets into our system here, it's still a PowerPoint file, not a presentation file. You would browse for a PowerPoint file and then you would go out to the desktop where the PowerPoints are. Listed in our system at the church building, it would be under the, the PowerPoints and there's different folders for e-praise, songs of faith and praise, new songs, etc. You would just go under the folder, locate the song, click on the song and open, and it would put that song automatically in your presentation. Themes, or if we wanted to add different backgrounds, you can click on a... Let's say you wanted to click on this cross theme you can set that as a default theme for scripture readings or for songs 
or whatever we wanted to use it for. This is not something you would use very often, but if you did need to change a theme behind a song or a scripture, you can do that here. Let's say for the lesson this Sunday, Rob wanted to show a YouTube video during his lesson. You would go to web that will open up a web dialog box. You might want to make sure that web is selected. You would copy and paste your YouTube video into this search bar. And then you would go over and click schedule. And that's going to add the YouTube link into the schedule. Looks like this one's having a problem playing, but typically it would automatically add the YouTube link into your schedule so you would click on that just like you would a song or a scripture reading and it would show the video during that session one thing to note if this happens you would also need to discuss this with the person operating the soundboard and make sure they have chosen the soft key that is the speaker plus a video and it will automatically raise the volume of the video as well otherwise there would be no audio coming through the speakers so you want to make sure that that happens in conjunction with playing this video. So it's going to display both the audio and the video. One thing just that you're aware of when you're working in Easy Worship 7 in the sound room, we now have three different screen options. So we're working on the main operation screen that you would look at on the left hand monitor in the sound room. The monitor on the, the big screen at the front of the auditorium is the main display monitor. That's what you would see over in this live output. We now have a third monitor option which is referred to as the fold back monitor or the confidence monitor. That monitor is only viewed by the leader at the stage monitor and then also the monitor that's above the projector and then it would also be viewed at the monitor to your right so those three screens are the third screen in the series this is also a screen where you can do things like up here on alerts you can click the alerts button you could add let's say you know little Johnny needs his mom to come to the nursery you could add that alert and that would show up to the leader or the speaker, whoever's on the stage at the time would see that pop up on their monitor and know that they need to make a special announcement uh, for, you know, for Johnny's mom to come check on him in the nursery um, rather than showing that up on the screen for everyone to see. Uh, again, not something we use very often, but it is a tool that we have available in Easy Worship. So if we're live, singing this song a couple options up at the top right you have a logo option that's typically going to be set with just the Maple Hill logo but if, if it's in between songs or during a prayer that you don't have a prayer image or something like that, you can click logo and it will change. Rather than displaying song lyrics we're not singing, it will just show the Maple Hill logo in the background. Black does exactly that. It just changes the screen to black. You can also click that again and it will come back to the song. Quick note on just how fast you click and this this seems like it's just something that that comes with the more you get used to running EC worship and get used to individual song leaders because everyone probably has their preference typically if we're singing this song and so the sun comes up it's a new day dawning it's time to sing that is about where you would click to the next slide you know if you think about how you're if you're reading a book you're always skimming a your eyes are moving a little bit ahead of where you actually are reading out loud. So if you think about when you're singing this song, I mean, if, if you sing it, 
sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, and then you click, well, then you're behind a little bit for the next lyric. So you want to make sure that you're clicking typically somewhere in the middle of this bottom bar. That's typically a safe place. Now, if it's a, a faster song, you might need to be back toward th this side of the bottom bar. If it's a really slow song, then you might want to wait till closer in this area. So the last, so these are each called bars. You might want to wait to the last bar of the song if it's a really slow song. And let's say it's a, a note that's going to be held out for a while. You might want to wait to the beginning of this bar and then click for the next words. But just, just try to think about it. W one thing, it's, it's very hard to run the slides and sing. Um, I know that can be frustrating because you want to sing along, but it can be difficult to do that because often what will happen is you will want to sing all the way to the end of the bar and then you're missing the cue to get to the next section. So just make sure if you do sing, you're very cognizant of that and make sure you're clicking somewhere in the middle in this range here on most songs anyway. Once you build a slideshow, I highly recommend that you go up here and hit save just because if, if something happens every once in a while the computer will freeze up or easy worship, easy worship will glitch and you could lose everything that you've made. Now if it's a Wednesday night and you've only got two or three songs it shouldn't take but two or three minutes to recreate this file but let's say you were building out the slideshow for a singing night and you had 15 songs in your schedule and something froze, then that's going to take a while to relocate all those songs. So I would always go up, make sure at the end you click save, or you can go to file and save schedule as, and just name that. And I typically just save it to the desktop. And then at the end of the service, you can delete that. So we're not taking up storage space, uh, but always save that file. That way it's, it's there for the next time. If something has been added that needs to be saved for all of the time, then you can go up here, check schedule for changes. Basically what this does is it's checking to see if there's anything in this schedule that would be changing our general storage area. So if you check schedule for changes, it's going to come over. It's like right now there's nothing new because I put everything up here from down here. But if there was a new song that was added or a new presentation added, you could run that it would go through, look for any changes, and if there's something new we've added here that should be updated, you can check that box and it will add that. That way it's available all the time. I think that's about it as far as what we generally use on a day-to-day -day basis inside Easy Worship. If there's anything that, that we should add to this training, please let me know. We can get that added, but I think this should get you know, most people up and running pretty quickly and easily as far as just the, the general day-to-day -day operations of Easy Worship. Thanks.